Good morning, everyone. Stuart Bell here from Avera Coaching Consulting, and I wanted to give you a quick update as to what, uh, what happened on the day one of the US uh, Thought Leaders Tour. Uh, fantastic day. From the very moment the first speaker came in uh, to the end of the day and the, the San Francisco 49ers game afterwards. Um, yeah, absolutely awesome lineup of speakers. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I wanted to share with you kind of three of the main ones, the, the, the three sort of main takeaways uh, that I think are relevant uh, to advise businesses back in Australia. And I think one of the, one of the most inspiring speakers, I mean, we had such, such a great lineup of speakers from Alex Vikovic giving us uh, an overview of sort of the US uh, political uh, atmosphere. Uh, we had uh, Matt Gunderson uh, from Personal Capital, I'll talk a bit about him later. David Selleck from uh, Advice Dynamic Partners. Uh, Michael Dunsworth uh, from Snapcard. We also had um, uh, Richard Arnold from uh, uh, Pocket Teller as well as um, uh, Jason Best to kick us off. But here's, here were my real takeouts. Uh, I think, for me, Richard Arnold was a real eye-opener. Uh, Richard, if you, if, you, if you don't know him, go check him out. He's, uh, he, he has the air of a man who knows Silicon Valley. He's been, been around here a while. And he gave a fantastic uh, talk called I Am The Customer. Uh, what I think is most relevant is he sort of gave us an overview of what the ecosystem over here looks like. And you know, the challenges he put forward was to stop, stop thinking you know, what, what your business is gonna look like a year from now if things kind of stay similar, but ask the question, you know, if everything changes, what, what does advice look 20 years from now? And uh, I think one of the challenges that was laid out uh, by him and also uh, you know, um, by Mark Nagel as well, one of the uh, delegates is, what, you know, what does an advice business look like if it's managing a thousand clients per advisor? What does an advice business look like if uh, clients pay 50 bucks a year and I think uh, when we start thinking about how clients will engage, what the service offer looks like, how we use technology, uh, it really opens the mind up which is kind of I think his, 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 uh, his point and I think uh, one of the things I wrote down and, and really made a note of is to consider the unconstrained problem. So if you had, if advisors, getting advisors wasn't an issue, if you had uh, unlimited resource, if, if you weren't constrained how would you approach the problem of advice differently? So fantastic insight from Richard, and yeah, go check him out, because he's, uh, he's an absolute uh, hive of ideas and of, of knowledge. Um, I also really enjoyed, number two, getting a look at uh, a business called Personal Capital. And Matt Gunderson came along and gave us an overview of how Personal Capital is kind of walking the line between you know, robo-advice, and I think by Matt's words, he said, yeah, we're not a robo-advice firm, but really combining it with the human element. and. Uh, you know what, although there's elements of the personal capital's model that I think probably wouldn't, wouldn't suit uh, certain things in Australia, I still think there is such benefit from going and having a look. And the fact that uh, you know, they're offering uh, finance tools, they're offering analytics, they're offering financial planning elements as a free uh, offer in order to get people uh, to come down the sales funnel, I think is really, really interesting. Uh, so personal capital is one that, you know, if you're interested in what an iteration of the future of a, of, a, of a scalable advice business that still has that human element, I think personal capital is one that's very much worth uh, looking over. And uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to dive into a bit more detail about that when I get back to Australia because I think that's a really interesting model. Uh, but finally, <laughs> look, the last uh, session of the day, I think we saved, you know, we we saved it for somebody who's just so much energy. Uh, Michael Dunworth is actually a former midwinter employee. He works with Julian uh, Plummer. Uh, but man, he just came along and gave us two things. He gave us an overview, an insight into uh, you know, what, what reality looks like for the, the thousands of, uh, by his own definition, tech geeks who arrive at their version of Hollywood every year uh, to see if they can you know, make it, be the one in a thousand that actually makes it. Uh, but I think other than giving us that enthusiasm, he gave us an insight into you know, Bitcoin, blockchain, which I know is a real uh, buzzword. Uh, and it's a really interesting space, you know? Of all the, the things going on right now, I think blockchain and Bitcoin have, do have the potential of transforming uh, so many elements of our, of our industry from the way that money is transferred, from the way that you know, uh, there is an ownership transfer of, of your house, for example. You know, it's quite possible that it, we, it could be used just to transfer the deed of a house uh, from share registries to custodianship to like instant settlement. Uh, it's one of those things that in, I think, Michael's own words, you know, we're only just beginning to understand uh, the impact it would have. So. Those are the sort of the main things, but I've got to be honest, such a fantastic range of speakers and, and also awesome to hear from, uh, you know, Mark Nagel stood up and gave us a really good overview of what he's working on, which I think is really exciting, so keep an eye on that. But um, really looking forward to day two. Uh, I'll keep you updated, but so far, 
Yeah, so good. So uh, more to come. Stay tuned and uh, I'll speak to you soon.